So a lot of people asked me previously how much I actually knew when I landed my first job as a software developer. So in this video, I'll be going through everything that I knew when I landed my first job as a software developer. So if that sounds interesting, let's get right into it. So the skills that I actually knew were HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React. Then I knew the backend side, which was MongoDB, Node.js, Express. Then I also knew Git and GitHub. Then for hosting, I knew Heroku. Then I also knew Netlify to host React apps, right? Then with regards to the data structures, I knew arrays, I knew array lists, I knew linked lists, I knew doubly linked lists. I knew queues, I knew stacks, I knew hash tables. So those are the only data structures that made sense to me. I tried to learn others. I understand how they work a little bit, but I'm not really understanding how they actually work in a wider scope. So those were the ones that I actually knew end to end during the interview. So they asked me to explain how linked lists work and stacks work. So I explained how they work. Then they also asked me like to explain the difference between the arrays and array lists. So I was able to do well in those questions because I already knew what linked lists are and also what stacks are and arrays and array lists and they already explained in the videos that I've watched for learning the data structures, the difference between the arrays and array lists, right? So that helped me to actually do well in those questions they asked me during the interview. Then although I knew about the algorithms, like the different algorithms that are available and actually have practice to actually solve different algorithms, during the interview, they didn't ask me to solve any algorithm. So they basically asked me to explain what a recursion is and also why should you use recursion sometimes instead of the loops, right? So I was able to answer the, that question nicely because I already knew what recursion is. And in the videos that I've watched, learning recursion, they actually explain why you should use recursion sometimes instead of using loops, right? So on the job post, they were looking for someone who has some knowledge in C Sharp, in .NET, in Postman, in Selenium, in Python, in TypeScript. So as you can see, there are a lot of skills that we're looking for. But as I've mentioned, I only knew the skills that I've mentioned at the start of this video. So that didn't discourage me to not apply to this job. I applied anyway because I learned from someone else who is a software developer who explained that although they are mentioning these skills, they're not really saying you should know all the skills. They're just saying it's a bonus if you know those skills. So I applied anyway, although I didn't know anything about those skills. I did know that they exist, but I haven't really learned them yet. So yeah, I applied anyway. So also in your case, if you are applying, if you see a lot of like a bunch of skills that you don't know, don't be thrown off, just apply anyway. So after the, the interview where they actually asked me about the data structures and about recursion, they actually gave me an assignment to complete. So on that assignment, I was tasked to actually create three functions or to complete three functions. So the functions were already created for me. I just needed to actually include everything in the body of the function, right? So the functions were named get products and prices. So that function was to actually get all the products to display on the UI, right? So I just needed to write some logic to display all the products on the UI. And the framework that I was using was React, so they already prepared everything for me. I just needed to complete those functions. So yeah, like I said, the get products and prices was just to get the products to display on the UI. Then another function that I needed to complete was add product to cart, right? So that is self-explanatory. So I just needed to actually create some logic to add a product to the cart and also to update the cart total once a product is added to the cart and also to make sure that you don't add a product to your cart twice, right? I need to add some logic to make sure that when you click on an item that is already being added to the cart, it lets the user know that this item has already been added to the cart and stop them from actually adding that same item to the cart again. Then the last function that I needed to complete was called remove product from cart, right? So that as well as self-explanatory. So I just needed to add the logic to actually remove an item that has been already added to the cart from the card but if that item is not available in the card it should let the user know that the item is not in the card so it's just a pop-up that lets the user know that whatever they're doing is not valid and also that remove product from card should update the card total so once the product is has been removed it should update the card total then also i needed to do some css so i needed to do some styling so the first 
thing that I needed to do was to vertically align the items or the, the text that was on the footer and also to center those items, right? So basically they wanted me to demonstrate my knowledge of Flexbox. So I was able to do that without any pain. Then also what I needed to do was to display the text sale at the top of a product to ensure that the user sees that this item is on sale. So I was able to get that done because there was an array that has been already created for me. So on that array, there are just a bunch of objects and on those objects, those are products and on the, on the products object, there's a property called sale and on that it's a Boolean. So it's either true or false. If it's true, I just display the text say at the top of a product if not then i'm not going to display that text right and lastly i needed to make sure that when a product has a long name i display the ellipsis at the end of the the, the text if it's long i need to avoid the overlapping of the name of the product by just adding ellipsis at the end of the characters right then after completing the task i submitted it then after i think a few weeks i got a call from them to actually explain everything that I did. So I explained how I approached the whole task. So I needed to explain the different approaches that I took, why I took a certain approach instead of another one. Then after explaining everything, I actually got a feedback from them and they told me that I did well, but not really well. They explained some of the things that I could have done. There are some certain line of codes, dozen line of lines of code that I needed to avoid because I really like a bunch of lines of code and somewhere sometimes i needed to actually add some comments but i didn't do that so they just mentioned some of the things that i missed so i didn't really do well on the training assignment but they didn't really hold me against that they allowed me to actually go to another step of the interview process so i'm not doing this video to mention the skills that i've learned so i can learn them as well so i'm not saying you should learn everything that i have learned when i got my first job I was just able to get the job at that point, but you can get a job as early as possible, like earlier than I did. So just start applying to jobs once you know HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And also if you can know a framework that would be beneficial to actually get a job much faster. So yeah, that's going to do it guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure you hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever I release new content. And lastly, like this video guys, thank you so much for watching, have an awesome day, bye.